Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. In my lap last episode I went to the moon and did I make a lot of boobs in that one? I think I made one blunder after the other. In fact in between time I even went to the moon without a spacesuit on. But I survived. I'll show you how I did that. Actually I'll show you how I do that now I think. Let's quickly go to the moon and have a look at the mine. So so look, what have I got on me? I think I've got everything I need this time. It's either in here. Yes, I've got my spacesuit in here. Put quickly put the spacesuit on. And let's get in here. I want to make sure I've got the right chip as well. You've got two choices with the chips. At the moment I've got space station. Where's it gone to? I want Yes, that's Launchpad Luna. Did I put the other one in here? No, I didn't. It probably is still in the spaceship, so let's get that out of here. Yeah, that's Earth. And in here I've got the other chip. Let's take it out like that. So that's Luna. Now that's one way to do it, by keeping an individual chip for each item. Because the other way to do it is by... Well, let's get into the spaceship. In fact, I should have done shift, right click, and then I can select, select destination just a second. Let me just turn off this one. So you can select destination here, and you can do it that way. But we don't need to, because we've already got it programmed with the, with the moon. So let's destination lunar. Let's go. Actually, I've got everything on the moon now that I need as well. So I've got fueling stations, whatever else. Which is quite good. My satellite rocket never returned, which is a bit of a shame. Because it's going to mean I need to build a new one. Now, as we go up, I've got plenty of oxygen. What else has been happening of interest? Well, I'm working hard on the diamond quest. Let's descend now. In fact, I put two markers, and I actually also did the other, the other. Um, how far is that? Three hundred meters away. I also set up the um, super teleportation frames, so we can simply quickly teleport to the. It's only. It's not very far away. It's only two hundred meters, so it's almost as quick. Right. So what you can also do with this thing here is you can take a tank of fuel. So here I've got a low pressure tank, which is basically one bucket of rocket fuel. So let's just have a quick look at what we've got in the rocket at the moment. So it's sort of just under half full. And I believe you can right click this onto the onto the rocket. Let's have a look. So that's now empty. So this has now got a, another bucket in. So it's actually probably enough to actually get me there. So what else we need to we, do, we can probably go back with that amount of fuel, but also let's take my helmet off. I look what's happening, no oxygen, but I'm not dying. In fact, my health isn't going down at all because of the uh, regen and the um, what's the other one saturation that actually keeping me alive. That's how I managed to survive getting to the moon <laughs> without any oxygen. <laughs> daft wasn't it so let's get the linker out and let's link this in as well right that'll be fueling up so let's go and have a look at the mine and what else did I do wrong well I didn't put a chunk loader in how daft was that let's actually light up the scene I've got my night vision on so let's press P for night vision I think why is that not working Oh, of course it's not going to work because I've not got my helmet and my suit on. So as you can see, it's slowly mining this area here now. We're getting cobblestone where the moon turf was. And in this chest here is empty because it's the end of chest which I'm sending out of here. I was sending it through the dimensional transceiver. 
but I decided to change it so that we can actually see what's actually in there. So let's quickly go back home. This should now, now be fueled up. Yeah, just about, yes. So we can get in here and we can launch. Because it doesn't use all this fuel. I think one of the things they say is you've got the advanced... I put advanced jet, um, rockets on this one, or advanced motors. And those are supposed to use less fuel. So it just uses a little bit under half a tank. So what I've got here is I made some super high pressure tanks. So we could actually put those in for your oxygen and you can actually put one of those tanks for the rocket. I'm also curious as to what would actually happen if I used the Ender IO tank. I haven't tried that yet, but that's one of those things as well. How far are we up to? Nearly up to the top now, I think. Let's escape. Oh, it's actually landing. So it looks like we're coming back to the moon. Of course we are, yes. I didn't do one thing, did I? Another boob. Never mind. Let's just uh, fix that. So what didn't I do? I didn't change the destination. Let's get the chip out. Let's get the linker out. Link successfully. Right, -click this. right, I got a little game crash there, as you may have noticed. So let's just um, right click this and then change the chip. So I should make a list of what things I need to do, shouldn't I? Let's have a quick look at this again. So the fuel is now full. So we can actually then this time go to Earth properly. So what was I saying? Yes, I was thinking we could try an Ender IO tank as well. But these tanks here, they're actually quite straightforward to make. So let's have a look at the recipe for that. Oh, didn't work. I just did a sort, didn't I? Try again. So basically you need titanium sheets in the rolling machine. The, the sheets are basically plates in the rolling machine. And the plates are ingots in the rolling machine. Or, in, the, um, in this case, we've got the metal press, the rolling machine, or the small plate presser. Or any of those will do. Fine. How are we doing? I thought we just got another crash, but we didn't. If you right, we're now, we're now back on Earth. We can't see very much at the moment, so wait and see what happens. Ah, oh, there we go. There's our little spot, spot there. I was being on the base updates as I moved the. Um, the animals out of here because I was thinking that maybe those are also causing a bit of lag and I don't really need the animals that much at the moment I might as well link this, get this fueled up again actually I can do the quick way, should we do that the quick way? let's take one of these like that right click this so it's then full rocket fuel, eight, eight buckets right come over here, get nearer Right click the rocket, so look at the rocket, rocket's fuel full and I've used one bucket. Is that all? Okay. So right, so I moved the animals from over here. Oops. Yes of course I need to change my armour, let's just change my armour. Don't need that here. So the animals were here and they've been moved. They're actually not very far away, I'll just show you where they are. They're here in this rather large pen, which is now off the biome. Is now ocean biome, I think. I must have clicked that by accident once. Anyway, let's go and have a look at something else. Actually, the main part of this episode. I need to tidy up some bits up here as well. <laughs> Look a bit strange, don't they? And that is diamonds. Let's first of all see how many diamonds we've got. Let's go. The room I'm doing in it is here. It's where I was doing the, the dirt quest. I'm now doing diamonds in here. So what have we got? Basically what I've got is a pulverizer. And I'm pulverizing diamond ore. Uh, with the tectronic perothium. And we're getting three diamonds each time. So I'm getting three diamonds for every ore. So I should be able to get this quest done fairly quickly, even though I've got this has got it's got one speed up in it and this 
tectonic initiator as an augment. I could put another speed up, but then I've got to balance everything out. So I'll take you through the process. But first of all, I think I'm going to change this a bit. Now, the reason I want to change it is it's a bit messy. And I'm sure I can do this a bit nicer. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, to stop this. Let me put my rocket stuff away, first of all, in this bag. And that will... And that's basically everything good. So in here, have I got it in here or have I just simply made it? Oh yes, here we are. What I'm thinking of doing is to use three items, a storage drawer with four compartments, a drawer controller and a storage downgrade. So the first thing I need out of my um, inventory here is this thirty quartz wrench and we want to just remove this block here I think is the one I want to remove so I can get at the back of this what I want to do is I want to stop the uh, machine so let's just right click this and then take these three out of here and I'll have to put them in again if I remember what they were they were actually quite straightforward so now what I'm going to do is move this item here as well I need the next wrench which every, every machine's got its own wrench these days so we'll do the this and we'll put this down because this has got the items we want in it oops that's probably not a good place let me just move that a bit further back like that so you see this has got clay redstone and diamond door so what i'm planning to do is to put onto here the controller so i'll put onto here the controller like this and then we can remove this business here this is actually where it gets a bit complicated I need to shift right, I uh, shift scroll until I get to the right one, this will do. And we can remove them on this side as well, like that. And in these chests, it's basically what I've got in here was a stack of each item. So I'll remove all of these out of here like this. Because the process is still running, they're being taken away. So we can then remove these quite happily like this. And I'll take you through the whole of this process in a second. Because the first thing I wanted to do was to tidy up this, because I thought it was a bit, bit messy. So that should now be connected to here. So what we want to do now is we want to lock it up. So let me get my key out of there, this box, my diamond backpack, and lock up the chest. We can do it by this one like that. Does that work? Ah, I probably need to rotate this. Let's rotate this a bit here like this. That's good. So now I can lock everything up. In fact, the only one I'm looking up is this one, so that's no big deal. So I'm going to put in here Diamond Door. And I'm going to put in here Redstone. And the last thing we're going to put in here was the clay. Like that. And then when we look at this, you'll see what we've got here is we can have a maximum of... Should be... Does it not tell me there? No, it doesn't. It tells you so it should be in the maximum of eight stacks. So I put in this, it reduces the storage to one stack. So this will never get more than one stack of items into it, which is exactly what we basically want. So all we need to do now is extract from here and always active. So the only thing that should be able to come into here are these three items. So now all we need to do is to take one of these three items and put that into the, fil into the filter and everything should be, should go again. I hope that's the case, we'll soon find out. One of these three come over here. Like that, and with a bit of luck these will start to fill up. Now clay went up to 58, redstone's going up. So yes, they are filling up great. So I can put these items back into here and then take this later on. And put those items out there so that makes this thing a bit tidier so let's start at the beginning here I've got three sterling generators they're just for power and then the first item here is an igneous, igneous, igneous extruder that's got lava and water so I'm actually using the lava from here to feed both the fuel this tank which is then fueling the jet sterling generators and water is on top of it and they're both in push mode as you see they've got their going the items are going down 
So this is then configured so it'll take items from the top and the left and it'll push it out to the right or the bottom. Or it actually only gets about the right. So then it's pushing out of here into here um, gravel and um, obsidian. The obsidian is then getting pulverized in this pulverizer and then being fed into here. So we've now got a fluid transposer. And what's happening here, we've got destabilized redstone coming in from the other side and pulverized obsidian making this basalt powder. And if you look over here, this is a magna crucible and the magna crucible has got a speed up augment in it. So that's basically get receiving, hopefully it's still receiving, some redstone. In fact, I'm surprised that hasn't got more. Of course it hasn't got more because it's not yet linked in, is it? Let's quickly link that in. So now we should see this coming up to 64. And then these will still be... See, diamond doors now, basically, yeah, they're all on stacks now. Which is, which is cool. So now we've got this basalt powder here. And here we've got an analog crafter. The analog crafter is taking the clay and the redstone, plus the pulverized obsidian and the basalt powder, and making petro petrothium dust. Okay. And then that's basically got a sticky so these items aren't being swapped around and these are blocked off so and they can take these from all sides you can actually say i want to in this particular case just take them from this side here which is north i think that's north yes that's north so then we get this bus up and that's coming into this magnet crucible to make tectronic prothium which of course is then going into the this pulverizer, or this is no longer a pulverizer, it's now a tectronic initiator pulverizer. And then we're making diamonds. Those diamonds are then coming back out again, getting fed into the actually there's a little ch mini chest here. Of course, they won't have any in here. I have to have a chest or some inventory in here because these uh, NRIO conduits don't connect to the import bus here. So that's basically it. So now we're getting lots of diamonds coming through. But let's have a quick look at what, how, what my state of my diamonds are. So if I have a look here, and let's look for diamonds. Well, I've got 17,000. I've got eight, nearly 1,900 blocks of diamond now. Uh, but I've also got 13,000 diamond ore, which are coming from the different locations in fact it's at night time yes i'm going to have a quick sleep because i don't want to run out of nether stars and the nether stars are actually being fed from here where's it gone to yes this one at the back here and this is actually simply being powered by a solar panel i think it's a tier one solar panel actually yes it's a tier one solar panel which is enough to provide the power for the uh, boot mob factory with the wither in it. And this one is a tier 4 ore miner configured for diamond actually. If I haven't shown you that before. So that's coming in and everything out of here is coming into here. Now before we go today is we want to have a look at what that moon mine has been gen give, receiving and what we've been receiving from the moon. So in this case, I took the, that's the other side of it. This was one I was using for dirt before. And then putting everything into this crate here. So we can now see, give that a quick sort as to what we're actually getting. So we're getting all sorts of items. Silver or lead ore, different types of lead ore actually. Copper ore, again, different types. Two types of tin ore, coal, redstone. One rutile ore, which is titanium. Plenty of dilithium ore. That's the that's main the main reason for going to the to the um, moon or would be in if this was a for sort of vanilla mod pack, but because we get dilithium from so, um, sand, isn't it? Sieving sand. We don't really need that from here. And the rest of it's so we're getting marble, limestone, hardened stone, and moon turf and clay and things like that. So it's quite a good collection of things. Well, let's have a look at what the quantum core is giving as well for that matter because I haven't looked at that for a while. 
I've still got the same filter on it, I think. Yes, this is just about full. So now I've got some rose bushes, some cabbages, some lilac. We're getting all sorts of things in here. Now I've got four pitcher plants. I've got one sunflower, which I have actually received the sunflowers from here before. We've got a stack and a half of black lotus, which is good for black dye, and a few pounds harvest craft stuff. So all in all, actually, it's quite an interesting machine because it's also got everything in this chest that's coming through here and anything in here is getting passed straight through so the lithium ore and retail ore is also in here should be where's that gone to bauxite i'm actually keeping it in that let me check that oh yes i am so now i've got five and a half stacks of retail ore so which is basically 10 stacks of titanium so that's pretty good as well. I was doing some oh, a bit of other testing. Oh, my rabbits have got out. Have they got out? Oh, we have this bread here. Interesting. I was doing a test to see these cables are actually quite cheap. The energy cables from Advanced Rocketry. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh, wrong one. I need to put that back on again don't I and I want cables in fact they're here so the data cables are the most expensive ones because you need a, a data storage unit which you have to make in the precision assembler with an emerald but that gives you eight and the rest gas glass planes are very cheap the power cables which I can see here the energy cables basically one copper rod so that's one piece of copper and six pieces of clay gives you a 32 energy pipe don't know what the transfer rate of that is but it's probably it might not be limited actually so it might be worth testing that on on high on devices that require a lot of power and the last one was the fluid pipe which is also one copper sheet that's again is copper in the rolling machine from the crafter block cutting machine and metal former going through the rolling machine so that's again one piece of copper and that makes how many of those did it make again 32 and that's actually a lot cheaper than ender io but they obviously don't you can't run them along the same path unlike ender io or along the same block which is ender io's main advantage isn't it so i wonder if these rabbits are actually spawning because i've got all these different biomes now and i'm not completely sure So I hope that was I hope that was clear as to what's going on. In oh I haven't looked at one last quest. Let's have a quick look at my sand quest as well. Because that's been, before I forget. Let's go down here and have a look at this. So I've got halfway there, we've got five hundred and eight five hundred and twelve thousand sand. Of course, that my sand in this case is coming from the same machines that I was using to make dirt, as it happens. So I've got gravel here coming. This is a crusher crushing cobblestone into gravel. The gravel is being then crushed into sand, and that's one pair of machines. And it's the same here, so it's three times that. So they're all producing gravel at a reasonable rate, 0.45, sorry, sand at 0.45 seconds. So it won't be too long before that, that quest is completed. Oops, if I can get out the door, that is. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. A little trick on how to get uh, lots of diamonds from your one ore. And it's not actually that expensive to do. And it's quite good fun. So until next time, bye for now.